want that you have to develop the educational base. So any investment targeted at development of creative industry means or need to have large portion of it being actually uh, on the education sector. Creative industry also consists of the crafts, the skills, the artifacts, which you already know, which have already so inherited for our historical background. That's why it is also largely cultural based. It's of fact, the development of any creative industry can only be sustainable and realizable if it is culture based. Because most of the artifacts have been developed by societies before, and what is needed is to look at the level of development of these artifacts, these crafts, and to see what the contemporary world will do to upgrade them to standards that will be comparable with other technologies. It is also a technology. In fact, it is, it is uh, the foundation of creative business, creative industry is technology. Because you have to have the, the know-how of how to do the constructs before uh, you take it to market. It is also ideological and philosophical. Just as much as it is uh, uh, social. That's why it is a very important base for socio-economic development. Because the bulk of creative industry, actually the bulk, the bulk of the income coming from creative industries is actually used within the society. So it provides an avenue of income which supplements other income we get, for example, from government, from donor agencies, and so on and so forth. So it, it is very important for realization of socio-economic development. So uh, to portray this further, I, I get in the second heading, the second topic, uh, chapter or section of this right of importance of trade in Quran and Sunnah. Looking at our background, since we have already realized that creative industry is culture-based, traditional-based, uh, society-based, I think we need to establish the relevance and the foundation of this in the Quran and Sunnah. And I gave uh, in the next page, page three, a verse of the Quran, Quran 7, chapter 32, where Allah SWT uh, admonish us to do more, to, to, to discover the universe, to discover the environment, physical, natural, and whatever. This verse is calling on us to explore, to do more research, to invent, to create. And this is the basis of actually any creative business. That people should not just hold arms and be only the consumers of other artifacts, other technologies. Uh, as Muslims, we should also be creators of technology. We should uh, also be creators of entrepreneurship, creators of trades, and so on and so forth. In another verse, the Holy Quran also encourages us that uh, uh, what kind of earning uh, uh, say who has forbidden the beautiful gifts of Allah which he has brought for his servants and the good for obedience Quran is encouraging us to make use of the worldly worldly uh, objects uh, actually for our sustenance that we should like I said we should not just be consumers we shall be creators uh, of actual technologies, activities, uh, especially service industries, which do not ever require much of the capital. Uh, the intellectual like uh, aspect of it, like uh, we know, it's also the, the writing, books, journals, uh, and so on and so forth. These are all intellectual base. And we should also do more to, to do our own things by ourselves. That means we should be self-reliant, self-sufficient. The attitude we, 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 we find ourselves today uh, having to import almost everything from abroad is discouraged by this verse of the Quran. 
And the, in another hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, what kind of, uh, for okay was asked, what kind of earning is best? And he said, for a man to work with his hands and every honest transaction. That's the best earning that is encouraged by the hadith, according to this hadith of the Quran. In this case, Muslims are encouraged to use their talents, use their physical, use their physical abilities to create not only uh, artifacts, but to create uh, actually economy, so that the ummah, the society, will be self-reliant and self-sufficient. We shall see in the later part of the Marite of how our traditions, our culture, have actually practiced this. And in the next heading, I say creative, in, uh, I said in fact, the Ebena has shown that the founders of the Sokoto Caliphate practiced these teachings so audaciously that the Caliphate itself was, born, was based not only on intellectual base, but it had also uh, an economy base. If we look at the, the, the setup of the Caliphate, we find out that wherever, uh, the, for example, if you take the Sokoto, if you look at the, the gates of Sokoto, uh, within the gates, you find out that all of the industries are there. You have the blacksmithing uh, for the manufacture of uh, uh, actually uh, farm implements, wheat funds, and so on. We, we know we have the knitting, we have the weaving, we have the textiles, we have almost all the industries we need. So Sokoto, as a caliphate, did not depend on any other uh, actually uh, civilization or any other uh, government to import anything it requires. And on the contrary, Sokoto actually exports this outside to outside communities. Uh, it is at this juncture I want to call on us to, to actually try as much as possible to revive this culture of self-sufficiency, to revive these traits that actually earn income for us as societies, so that thereby reducing our dependence on government. Uh, I say that's why in my next uh, uh, topic I, I talked about creative industry and self-reliance because they are directly related. And in this sector, I took one pillar, one of the very important sector of creative industry, the tourism industry. Where I, in the, in, on page four, I actually uh, provided a chart which shows the, the performance of economies, of countries uh, in the world in this sector. And if you look at it on page four, you will see clearly that the developed countries are actually doing much more than the developing countries. The US, for example, is leading, followed by China and other industries. The only countries in Africa, for example, that are faring a bit well are the Southern African countries, like Namibia, uh, and some, uh, some, uh, uh, and also the, the 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 Arab countries like Morocco is also here in here, but Nigeria is trailing with only 2.79 percent of the uh, uh, actually aggregate income realizable from tourism. This is very interesting because. Uh, 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 we know that the whole is uh, this even there's concrete evidence of relative performance of indigenous African economy in traditional African state and cultures. This report uh, was done by Kwanashi uh, in 2009, where he studies the impact of art and culture on Nigerian economy, and it was realized that the traditional industry were doing fairly well. Uh, before now. In fact, the economic history of these societies, the African countries uh, is referred to, uh, revealed periods when they exhibited higher levels of creativity contents in the social cultural activities resulting into existence of comparable economies with those elsewhere in the world. In fact, according to a report of Polish, it is generally acknowledged that African people are creative as demonstrated by a long history of existence of unique cultural goods and services that have been accepted around the world. In fact, we know in the Sokoto Caliphate, for example, uh, not only 
that the caliper was rich in goods. It was also rich in, in, in intellect. Uh, we know the writers of uh, founders of the caliphate, Shem Osman and Fodio, Abdullahi bin Fodio, Sultan Muhammad Bella, and so on, cut across all fields, uh, including science, medicine, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. In fact, as we will see, uh, the chef you know, uh, uh, Abdullahi bin Fodio in his book, Kitab al Niyat, actually gave a dossier of procedures including ethics of how to set off uh, manufacturing industries, especially the textiles and the lack of them. Uh, so we see that our culture is not culture of dependence. In fact, our culture is actually self-sufficient and self-providing. It is only because we are now copying other cultures that are becoming more and more dependent on foreign goods foreign trades and so on and so forth. So I, in the next section, I say, what is a view forward? Uh, I, according to Professor Dello, uh, 2016, uh, uh, Nigeria has made efforts, both in policies and in practice was transforming. From, uh, Nigeria made efforts from, for diversification, from actually mono economy to a diversified economy. But, if, uh, but the problem is there has been huge effort, of course, especially in proposing the models, economic models, that actually will sell Nigeria or will bring Nigeria out of uh, economic dependence and depression. We know so many of them, the South, the uh, Beijing, the development goals, and so on and so forth. Uh, some of them are still in practice, actually. But the, uh, the, 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 the sustainable, uh, uh, in order to address this inherent, uh, that the diversification and technology reform and independent through industrialization, but such attempt, uh, according to Bella, have been devoid of the underlying historical and cultural realities of the nation. In other words, we need to build from our traditional base. What we are doing is to abandon our base and try to copy 100% the foreign culture, foreign traditions, and uh, uh, thinking that that will bring us out of our economic hardship and economic uh, defend and, uh, uh, defenders. What this report of Professor Bello is emphasized is that we are supposed to build from our tradition. These local artifacts, these creative businesses, these historic base should be uh, strengthened and consolidated so that they will serve as basis for our economic transformation. So in order to redress this inherent anomaly, there is a need to integrate this ambitious strategy with the existing literature, which seeks to consider culture as a variable factor, and core and basis for development. This strategy has hitherto been neglected, according to them. Uh, and for, for us to benefit, for us to come out of this, for us, for us actually, to establish a viable economy base, uh, uh, Professor Bello actually proposes the following strategies. Number one, that the economy should be regarded as a holistic conglomerate of culture and history. Number two, there should be one defined strategy and policies on national revenues and how they are utilized. Number three, that human imaginative and true fabricating capabilities, otherwise as organic culture, should be seen as constituting hallmark for social development. And this is very, this is very important. And this is what I tried to emphasize in my earlier talk on now integrating our historical uh, performance on traditional businesses, both service and technology and intellectual, to be able to provide basis for our economic uh, development. Uh, and he also says there is increasing importance and influence and relevance of culture to the development process should be felt at all levels, as indicated in the broad literature on the subject. And that the neglected informal sector in Nigeria represents an indigenous popular industrial creative and productive structure. Uh, that Nigeria's cultural assets should be seen as constituting the essential basis for the development of tourism, for example, 
in the country. Uh, like he said, Nigeria actually hosts vast amounts of potentials in tourism, and if properly utilized, it stands actually Nigeria stands to gain a lot in terms of economy, in terms of income, and in terms of uh, job uh, creation. Uh, so emphasis should be done there. Nigeria, all of it, especially if we come to north now, talking about South Africa Caliph, we have vast cultures, a vast historic base, we have the museum, we have the uh, sort of history, Beru, and so on and so forth. And we have the literature, and we have the artifacts. I say if we were well harnessed, this will actually bring a lot of income to us. Uh, since this occasion is about media launch, uh, I say what is the role of media then? Or the virtualization of creative culture in Nigeria? So the first of all the important aspect of the role of media is to see media as part of culture. In fact, uh, media and culture are intertwined. Uh, and so the, the media should now focus efforts at emphasizing on promotion of cultural values, cultural ethics, and uh, societal transformation. And in this way, they will contribute a lot in the orientation of our citizenry to actually revert to this traditional uh, culture of being creative, being self-sufficient. Uh, for example, if we look at Sokotos today, most of the traditional trades are almost dead. If you look, if you go to those areas I've told you, where you have the Marana, the Masaka, the Madonka, the whatever, most of there is only very few people that are practicing this trades. I think it is the role of the media to organize and to launch a very, very aggressive media uh, for propaganda and whatever you will call it, to make sure that these trades are revived because they are the actual source of income for the people of Sokoto. And it will go a long way in reducing our dependence on them. If you look at what is happening today, it's like everybody depends on government. The workers, our businessmen, and whatever, they are, we are all depending on government salaries. I think if we revive our culture, our traditional industries, we will not be thinking about salaries. We'll be creating economy, we'll be creating businesses, we'll be creating income for our people. If I know very uh, uh, very well that are not in our homes, even as our married women are engaged in most of this. They do the Iki, we know the Nizami and whatever, are actually done by women in their homes, which we take to market and sell, and thereby getting income from them. In fact, even the, the mats, most of them are actually being done by women at, at home. Now what is happening is that we no longer patronize these artifacts. We prefer importing from abroad. And so this is one of the reasons why these businesses are actually becoming uh, almost extinct. I think the media has a role to play to call on all, uh, to, to actually synthesize the populace that we need to actually appreciate the importance of these traits. We need to patronize them. We need to understand that they are our traditional base, they are our history, and we cannot develop uh, more than our history. So that's why I borrow this is, uh, as, a, as a topic, is the role of media. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the individual should actually provide a program where they should be advocating on roles of these businesses and how to improve them, how to encourage them, how to actually resuscitate them, cutting across other sectors of the economy. They can do it in their zone, of course, with government agencies, with donor agencies, with private sector, with individuals, uh, so that there should be uh, actually an investment in this sector our traditional industries. And it, I, I think if it's well focused, well articulated, it will go a long way in reducing the begging, the joblessness we have now in our use and so on and so forth. And then I give you the next one, as a role of agencies and institutions. Uh, according to a university, it says 
So Nigeria should understand the dynamics of culture in order to initiate, to reinvent the profit making strategies. I think that the National Development Initiative depends on large extent on the understanding of culture and the adoption of the elements of culture from educational and economic development. Thus, uh, just as culture is a force, as a force has both its economic and political consequences in life of any nation. Johnson uh, stated, observed that the educational system, the national theater, state arts and council, the tourism, broadcast and textile industries, as well as fashion houses, need to be repositioned for the Nigerian economy to enjoy their full potentials. Uh, I say what well, then? Now, if you want to reposition industry, the the key thing you think about is funding. What is the impact of funding? That's my next uh, topic uh, in Nigeria creative industry. As it has been observed, according to a report of bankers, that the contribution of non-oil sector to Nigerian economy has continued to expand relative to oil sector, due mainly to combination of lower oil prices and the low, lower oil production. Uh, that, that means there is a, a huge drive now towards actually uh, encouraging the development of non-oil sector of the economy, and uh, uh, part of it is the creative industry. Now, that despite the negative GDP growth, growth recorded in the second quarter of 2016, the contraction of the economy was less severe, as this is attributable to the relative diversified non-oil sector, which was buoyed primarily by growth in some economy sectors, one of which was the creative industry. We all know the, for example, the growth, the unprecedented growth in the film industry, the, the, the Nollywood, for example, which is now second only to Nollywood in production. I think in 2016, Nollywood produced an average of 1,000 actually pieces. So that is this drive that is actually coming up. And uh, the result of this drive is what I call in my next uh, uh, topic, the funding they have called uh, from banks. Uh, creative industry has enjoyed relative funding from across banks. The NDB, the UBA, uh, the other bank banking sectors actually have invested a lot, especially in the film industry. This has actually contributed to the growth in the 2016 of the film industry. And this is coupled also with the funding that the industry received from government under its program of economic diversification. And we know the Ministry of Social uh, Use and Culture, Information and Use and Culture has done uh, actually a lot on this uh, uh, in, the, in the name of economic diversification. And this industry also received funding from donor agencies. In conclusion, as in order to achieve a significant and comprehensive shift in the social economic performance of creative industry in Nigeria, as well as its attendant effect on attendant of self-reliance and sustainable development, there is a need for a sustained reorientation and reawakening of people on the need to appreciate our history and how it played into our survival as societies. In addition, people must be made to realize that our social economic development does not lie in patronage of alien cultures and traditions. Rather, it lies in our ability to appreciate and develop our historic, traditional, creative culture as a vehicle for social, uh, educational, uh, scientific, and technological development. Born out of this is some recommendations which are uh, listed out uh, uh, as follows. Number one, that government should launch a more aggressive campaign on national reorientation with the sole aim of institutionalizing the revival of the traditional creative industry and repositioning them as basis of socio-economic growth of the nation. Uh, recommendation number two, that private sector should be made to make appropriate investment in the creative industry by way of funding and related support services. Number three, media should formulate a deliberate policy on sustaining government policies and support on creative industry. 
through organizing specific programs aimed at cultural reintegration in the industry. Number four, I say government should commit more investment and funding in the educational sector being the foundation for creative skill and services as well as technologies in the society. Number five, there is a need for an overall enablement and modernization of the informal sector at the base of the economy. And the key strategy for both, for, uh, it is also a key strategy for both poverty eradication and economic self-reliance. This is particularly relevant in the light of the colossal failures represented in White Elephant and Westport projects, such as the Ajakota, Asphalt Places, and so on, which, are, which lack any generative and sustainable linkage related to the local economy. Number six, our universities and colleges should more serious researches aimed at establishing models of economic growth and based on reinventing, reinventing our creative industries to match with the global trends. Number seven, that Nigeria's unique socio-cultural, historical, and geographical features should be the basis for promotion of its own distinctive brands of cultural tourism, eco-tourism, educational tourism, economic and health tourism, in addition to the possibility of constituting itself into an important African regional tourist attraction. Number eight, that our creative arts, crafts, and small-scale industries based like metal work, ceramics, woodwork, chemical processing, mining, laser works, food processing, building, construction, and so on, should be revitalized and supported to provide needed potential for the diversification of the economy through supportive and friendly policies in the form of national support and uh, protection uh, programs, along with the provision of infrastructure facilities for the locally based small scale industry sector. It is important to emphasize that this creative industry also constitutes the foundation for the technological development of the country in practical terms. In addition to supporting the creative industry, the federal and state government need to work out a deliberate policy and are directly patronizing such industries, like I said before, in order to promote desired growth in the industry. This can be done through legislations aim at, for instance, ensuring their participation in government-funded projects up to some limit, as is currently in the existence in some African countries, such as in Morocco. This is according to Belo 2006. Uh, Your Excellency, Sir, uh, distinguished invited guest, uh, I want to see that if we actually do well in this promotion of creative industry, we shall actually provide uh, an alternative to our dependence on government and we shall also create jobs and thereby also create income uh, that will be able and will be able to now actually engage our team in use in a lot of businesses so that uh, they will be gainfully employed. With these few uh, remarks, inshallah, I want to say as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.